uh, Kartik is a doctoral candidate at Stanford University Electrical Engineering School. Uh, and his work has been focused on developing the theory and practice of modern information processing to create smarter ways to process large quantities of data. So, Kartik, up for your 45 minutes. <laughs> Printed out that, like three pages long. No, I'm just doing. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for having me here. Congratulations to Peter as well for being a kind of pleasure to be here. It's my first time in London, and uh, I'd also like to thank Saki here, who's my advisor, who flew all the way here and decided to join me. Thank you so much, and thank you all again for having me. Um, so I was born in Delhi in India and um, sort of grew up very interested in mathematics and did my undergrad in electrical engineering because I was fascinated by engineering systems and slowly gravitated towards uh, more of the mathematical aspects of modeling these engineering systems. And then I got interested in information theory, which is kind of exactly what it's about. And then I came to Stanford five years ago and decided to delve deeper into the subject and that's where my research career started. And um, and so I won't tell you all about what I've been doing. Uh, the pleasure of working on many different aspects of problems, but I will quickly mention one or two of them. Uh, so recently, me and my co-authors, Saki included, came up with a new way to measure a quantity that's very central in information theory. It's called mutual information. Uh, it depends how different statistical sources are dependent on each other, and it comes up in various applications, neuroscience, linguistics. You want to find out how much you can compress the works of Shakespeare. The answer from that would be entropy and information. So recently, we came up with algorithms to measure this from real data, and we came up with efficient and optimal algorithms to do that. And now we're applying it to all sorts of problems, like Google wants to, for example, predict uh, the next query in your search entry as you're writing it as you're writing it down. And the answer to that turns out to be conditional entropy, which we can come up with smarter ways to estimate. And you want to, for example, find out how the brain encodes information uh, in the form of neural spike trains. How do you measure that? Turns out to be in the form of entropy. And so these are some of the applications that we're looking at. Uh, another interesting problem uh, in the context of modern information processing is in the context of biological data. So each of us has a three billion base pair long human genome, and soon we want to be able to sequence all of us and be able to understand what sort of genetic variations we have, what susceptibility to diseases we have. And one problem that comes up associated with that is our ability to store all this humongous data efficiently. And one very simple idea is that you and I have very similar human genomes. Why not we use those similarities to store them in a better way on the cloud? And so we came up with a very efficient algorithm to be able to use the sort of commonalities in the human genome to be able to store them. Uh, and just to give you numbers, we were able to reduce a three gigabyte file down to seven megabytes wow. just by using, uh, for example, the similarities between the human genome between two people. And, and that was just sort of an indication of the kind of techniques that to bear that information theory can bring to real and interesting problems. And thank you for your time and hope you have a great evening.